a fighter jet so advanced it terrified its own creators. Fast enough to outrun anything in the sky, stealthy enough to vanish from enemy radar like a ghost. The YF-23 Black Widow II was supposed to dominate the skies for decades. Instead, it was locked away in a museum, buried by a decision that still haunts Pentagon generals today. But here's the thing, this forgotten warbird just delivered a message the Air Force can't ignore. And what it reveals about America's future in the skies? It's going to shock you. The year was 1991. Two cutting-edge prototypes stood on the tarmac at Edwards Air Force Base, ready to determine the future of American air dominance. One would become the legendary F-22 Raptor. The other would disappear into obscurity. But the jet that lost might have been the better fighter all along. And today, as China and Russia close the gap with their own stealth technology, that old decision is coming back to haunt us. Welcome to Jet Insight, where we break down the most fascinating stories in military aviation. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most controversial decisions in Air Force history, and why the ghost of the YF-23 is rattling cages in Washington right now. If you agree that America deserves the absolute best in fighter technology, type proud in the comments below. The Beast That Never Was Let's go back to the late 1980s. The Soviet Union was churning out advanced fighters like the MiG-29 and Su-27. These weren't just upgraded Cold War relics. They were legitimate threats capable of challenging American air superiority. The Pentagon needed an answer. Not just a good answer, an overwhelming one. Enter the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program. Two aerospace giants stepped up to the challenge. Lockheed teamed up with Boeing and General Dynamics to build the YF-22. Northrop partnered with McDonnell Douglas to create the YF-23. Both companies poured nearly $700 million into their designs. These weren't just prototypes. They were billion-dollar bets on the future of warfare. The YF-23 emerged from Northrop's skunk works like something from a science fiction movie. Its design was radical. Diamond-shaped wings, V-shaped tail surfaces angled outward, engine exhausts buried deep in the airframe to reduce infrared signature. Every curve, every angle, every surface was optimized for one thing, invisibility. When it rolled out onto the tarmac, veteran test pilots couldn't believe what they were seeing. This wasn't just stealthy, it was alien. The jet's entire philosophy was built around staying undetected while striking at supersonic speeds. It could supercruise at Mach 1.6 without using fuel guzzling afterburners. That meant it could fly faster, longer, and quieter than anything else in the sky. The numbers were staggering. Combat radius of 2,279 miles, nearly 500 miles further than the YF-22. Radar cross-section, smaller than a steel marble. Top speed of Mach 2.2. And here's the kicker. During the competition trials, the YF-23 was the only aircraft that actually demonstrated true supercruise capability. The YF-22 couldn't match that performance during testing. Before we dive deeper, please take a second to like this video and subscribe. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing. It costs you nothing, but it means a lot to us. But speed and stealth weren't the YF-23's only advantages. The jet was designed from day one to fight in contested airspace deep behind enemy lines. Its extended range meant it could penetrate Soviet airspace, engage targets, and return home without needing tanker support. For Navy carrier operations, this was a game changer. Carriers could stay further from enemy shores while their fighters struck deep in land. The Air Force had laid out specific requirements for the advanced tactical fighter. The YF-23 exceeded them in almost every category. It was faster, stealthier, had better range, used less fuel. On paper, it was the clear winner. So what went wrong? How did the superior aircraft lose? The decision that changed everything. April 23, 1991, the day the Air Force made its choice. Secretary of the Air Force Donald Rice stepped up to the podium and announced Lockheed's YF-22 would become America's next air superiority fighter. Northrop's engineers were stunned. Pilots who had flown both aircraft couldn't understand the decision. Defense analysts scratched their heads. The official explanation focused on maneuverability. The YF-22 featured thrust vectoring, movable engine nozzles that could redirect jet exhaust, allowing the aircraft to perform impossible-looking aerial acrobatics. In a dogfight, 
the YF-22 could point its nose in directions that defied physics. It looked incredible at air shows. But here's what most people don't know. The YF-23 didn't need thrust vectoring to match the YF-22's agility. It used those massive V-tail surfaces and its unique aerodynamic design to achieve nearly identical turning performance. Test pilot Paul Metz, one of the few men to fly both aircraft, later admitted the YF-23's maneuverability was far better than most people realized. So if performance wasn't the real deciding factor, what was? Politics. Timing. Corporate reputation. And something Air Force insiders call the fighter mafia. See, Northrop had problems. Big ones. Just six months before the YF-23's first flight, the company pleaded guilty to 34 fraud charges related to earlier defense programs. Their B-2 Spirit Bomber program was hemorrhaging money, going massively over budget. Congress and Pentagon brass had lost confidence in Northrop's ability to deliver on time and on cost. Lockheed, on the other hand, was struggling financially and needed the contract to survive. There were legitimate concerns about maintaining competition in the defense industry. If Lockheed lost, they might exit the fighter business entirely, leaving Northrop with a monopoly. But there was something else, something more insidious. The old guard of fighter pilots, the so-called fighter mafia, still dominated Air Force leadership. These were men who grew up in the Vietnam era, when dogfights and visual range combat were the name of the game. They loved the YF-22's thrust vectoring because it promised traditional air combat superiority. The YF-23 represented a different philosophy entirely. It was built for beyond visual range combat. Strike first from a hundred miles away. Stay invisible. Never let the enemy see you coming. For the old fighter jocks, this felt wrong. It wasn't real air combat. Test pilot Paul Metz summed it up perfectly years later. Northrop's team was made up of brilliant engineers who thought and spoke almost exclusively in engineering terms. Lockheed infused far more marketing, salesmanship, and pizzazz into their YF-22 flight demonstrations. Northrop built the better airplane. Lockheed sold the better story. The YF-22 became the F-22 Raptor. It entered service in 2005 and remains the world's most dominant air superiority fighter. But production was capped at just 187 aircraft due to budget cuts and shifting priorities. The silver bullet force America planned never materialized. Meanwhile, the two YF-23 prototypes were sent to museums. One sits at the National Museum of the Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. The other rests at the Western Museum of Flight in California. Beautiful, deadly, forgotten, or so everyone thought. The warning we ignored. Fast forward to today. The F-22 Raptor fleet is aging. Only 186 operational aircraft remain, and their maintenance costs keep climbing. The F-35 Lightning II, while impressive, was designed as a multi-role fighter and lacks the F-22's pure air-to-air -air dominance. And here's the problem. America's adversaries didn't stop innovating. China unveiled the J-20 stealth fighter in 2011. Russia rolled out the Su-57. Both aircraft incorporate stealth technology that directly challenges American air superiority. Neither country is constrained by the budget politics and bureaucratic red tape that strangled F-22 production. Now, the Air Force is scrambling to develop the next generation air dominance fighter, or NGI, America's sixth generation answer to emerging threats. The program is already facing the exact same problems that limited F-22 production. Skyrocketing costs, political infighting, and strategic indecision. And this is where the YF-23 delivers its warning. Look at what happened. The Air Force chose the YF-22 in 1991. By the time it entered service in 2005, 14 years had passed. Production was capped before the fleet reached critical mass. The total cost per aircraft ballooned to over $150 million. And now, barely two decades later, the entire fleet needs replacement. The YF-23 represented a different approach, one focused on range, stealth, and long-term strategic value over short-term showmanship. Had it been selected, would production have been cut just as severely? Probably. But the jet's superior range and lower infrared signature might have changed how America projected air power in the Pacific. Defense analysts are now openly questioning whether the Air Force made the right choice. Some argue the YF-23's capabilities align better with modern threats than the F-22's dogfighting prowess. 
In an era of long-range missiles and advanced radar systems, staying invisible and striking from extreme distances matters more than thrust vectoring tricks. The warning isn't about relitigating a 30-year-old decision. It's about the pattern. America keeps choosing short-term spectacle over long-term strategic advantage. The defense acquisition system prioritizes contracts that look good in congressional hearings rather than capabilities that win wars. Just look at the NGAD program right now. Reports suggest cost per aircraft could exceed $300 million. That's double the F-22's price tag. At those numbers, how many will actually get built? 20? 30? Will we repeat the same mistake, creating another exquisite silver bullet force that's too expensive to use and too small to matter? The YF-23 warns us that brilliance without commitment is meaningless. You can design the world's best fighter, but if you can't build enough of them, if you can't deploy them where they're needed, if you can't maintain them over decades of service, then you've wasted billions of dollars on museum pieces. And here's the really unsettling part. While America debates and delays, China is mass-producing stealth fighters. They're not getting bogged down in perfectionism or political theater. They're building capability at scale. That's what wins wars. The ghost returns, but the story doesn't end in a museum. Something fascinating happened recently that brought the YF-23 roaring back into relevance. In 2024, Northrop Grumman released a partial rendering of their proposed F-A-20 fighter, the Navy's sixth-generation carrier-based fighter concept. And when that image hit the internet, aviation enthusiasts immediately noticed something stunning. It looked like a YF-23, the distinctive duckbill nose, the sleek, blended wing-body design. Even the canopy structure mirrored the Black Widow too, but there was one crucial difference. The engine intakes were positioned on top of the airframe instead of underneath. This seemingly small change is actually revolutionary. Top-mounted intakes dramatically reduce infrared and radar signatures, especially when viewed from below, critical for naval operations where enemy ships scan the skies with powerful radars. It's a more complex engineering challenge, but it represents exactly the kind of stealth-focused design philosophy the YF-23 pioneered. Northrop isn't just paying homage to their old design, they're proving that the YF-23's core concepts remain valid three decades later. In fact, for sixth-generation warfare requirements, extended range, reduced signature, high-speed penetration of advanced air defenses, the YF-23 philosophy looks downright prophetic. The Air Force has also been tight-lipped about their NGAD demonstrator aircraft. They've admitted to flying full-scale prototypes in secret, but refused to release images or details. However, Air Force officials have hinted that released concept art contains misdirections to confuse adversaries. Whatever the real NGAD looks like, it's drawing from lessons learned across decades of stealth development, including the YF-23. Around this point in watching military aviation content, thousands of veterans and enthusiasts join communities dedicated to preserving these stories. It's people like you who keep the legacy of American air power alive for future generations. What makes this particularly interesting is Northrop Grumman's current reputation. Remember how they were scandal-plagued and over-budget in 1991? Today, they're delivering the B-21 Raider stealth bomber on time and on budget, something almost unheard of in modern defense contracting. Meanwhile, Lockheed Martin's F-35 program has been plagued by delays and cost overruns exceeding any defense project in history. The tables have turned. And suddenly, that YF-23 sitting in the museum doesn't look like a failure anymore. It looks like a missed opportunity. Lessons for the future. So what's the real message the YF-23 is sending to the Air Force today? First, don't let politics override engineering. The best aircraft doesn't always win contracts, but in war, capability matters more than marketing. The YF-23 was objectively superior in key performance areas, yet it lost because Lockheed told a better story. That's backwards. Second, range and stealth matter more than ever. Modern warfare isn't about dogfights. It's about sensor fusion, long-range strikes, and staying undetected. The YF-23's focus on these capabilities looks increasingly prescient as the Pacific Theater becomes the primary concern for American defense planners. Third, build at scale, or don't build at all. The F-22 Raptor is magnificent, but 186 aircraft can't defend American interests globally. 
If the NGAD program produces another tiny boutique fleet, it will fail no matter how advanced the technology. Mass matters. Fourth, speed matters. The YF-23 went from concept to first flight in just 50 months during the 1980s. Today's programs take decades. China is outpacing America not because their technology is better, but because their acquisition system moves faster. The bureaucratic delays are killing American air superiority. Fifth, maintain industrial competition. One reason for choosing the YF-22 was preserving Lockheed as a fighter manufacturer. That made sense then. But now, with Lockheed dominating fighter production with the F-35, maybe more competition would drive innovation and control costs. The YF-23 represents a fork in the road where America chose one path and can never know what the other would have brought. But its legacy isn't about regret. It's about learning. Right now, the Air Force stands at another crossroads with NGAD. Will they repeat the same mistakes, prioritizing showmanship over capability, cutting production due to costs, letting political considerations override strategic necessity, or will they finally break the cycle? Our brave airmen and women deserve the absolute best tools to defend American interests. They deserve aircraft that reflect real combat requirements, not Pentagon politics. They deserve a defense establishment that can still build at scale and speed, not just produce PowerPoint presentations and test footage. The YF-23 proved America could still design world-beating fighters. But it also revealed we'd lost the ability to make hard strategic choices and stick with them. We'd lost the discipline to build what victory requires, rather than what committees approve. That's the warning. That's the message from a fighter that never fought a war but might have changed how wars are fought. And if the Air Force doesn't hear it this time, the consequences could be catastrophic. Conclusion The YF-23 Black Widow II sits silently in museums across America, a monument to what might have been. But its shadow looms larger than ever over the future of American air dominance. The question isn't whether we made a mistake in 1991. The question is whether we'll learn from it in time. If this story opened your eyes to the complexities of defense procurement and the real challenges facing our military, hit that like button and subscribe to Jet Insight for more untold stories from the skies. The fight for air superiority never ends, and neither does our coverage.